the opening scene, we see a man named Thomas Richardson, who is anxiously reading a letter from his sister while traveling on a train. The letter reveals that his sister, Jennifer, has been abducted and is being held for ransom by a cult. A flashback shows that Thomas returned home after a long gap, only to discover his sister missing and his father in a deteriorated state. The family lawyer informed Thomas of Jennifer's whereabouts, a place called Welsh Island. He also instructed Thomas to enter the cult posing as a convert and not to pay the ransom until they released his sister. In the present, Thomas gets off the train and proceeds to board a boat to the island. While waiting in line, he notices that the ticket has a distinctive red mark, unlike the others. In a clever move, he pretends to help a fellow passenger and swaps tickets. This enables Thomas to successfully board the boat, while the man with the red marked ticket receives a cross symbol on his luggage. On their way, a sudden storm hits, causing a goat on the boat to fall into the passenger compartment. Thomas picks it up, but another passenger snatches it from him and throws it into the water. Try not to laugh, citing it as a sacrifice demanded by their goddess. In the morning, the group reaches the coast, and they continue the rest of their journey on foot, eventually arriving at a quaint, old-fashioned village. There, all of them are examined and interrogated, one after another, before being led to their respective cottages. That evening, Thomas walks out of his cottage to explore the village. During his walk, he witnesses villagers bringing an unconscious man. Thomas is curious to know what's going on, but he opts not to intervene. After this, he goes to the nearby church, where the cult's leader, Malcolm Howe, is delivering a speech about the island. Malcolm recounts how he and two other friends, Frank and Quinn, escaped England due to religious persecution and ended up here. Later, the unconscious man from earlier is subjected to a brutal beating by Malcolm, Frank, and Quinn. It turns out he is the same man with whom Thomas swapped his ticket. The trio believe that the man is Jennifer's father, who has come to rescue his daughter. They demand for the ransom, but the man is clueless about the situation. Frustrated, they slit his throat and brutally kill him. Despite this, Malcolm still believes that there's an intruder in their village. That same night, Thomas sneaks out from his cottage and secretly wanders around the village in search of his sister. During this, he witnesses a husband cutting his wife's arm to offer her blood as a sacrifice. Next, he peeks into Malcolm's place and sees the cult leader descending through a secret trap door in the floor. Shortly after, he comes across Frank's son, Jeremy, and Quinn's daughter, Fian, who are sneaking home after sharing some intimate moments together. Following all of this, Thomas returns to his cottage, and while unlocking the door, he inadvertently cuts his hand. As he enters, his blood on the floor starts moving inexplicably toward the gaps in the wooden floorboards. The next morning, a knock on Thomas's door rouses him from sleep. Answering the door, he finds Jeremy, who has come to summon him to go to the assigned work. In the midst of work, Jeremy asks Thomas about the reason why he was out last night, to which the latter claims that he was just having a cigarette. A short while later, the boy leads Thomas to a seashore and shows him a wrecked boat. Jeremy explains that a spy was caught trying to flee the island, but he drowned into the sea. He believes that their goddess killed the spy and saved their cult. Following this, Thomas shows him a picture of his missing sister and inquires about her whereabouts. This puts the boy at great unease, so he tries to walk away. However, Thomas forces him to reveal everything he knows. Jeremy then discloses that Jennifer was abducted for ransom because the cult doesn't have enough crops to feed its members. They're also lacking the necessary resources to pay for the continuous animal sacrifices needed to maintain the island's fertility. After hearing this, Thomas asks the boy to help him in his mission, and in exchange, he'll keep Jeremy's affair a secret. On the other hand, Fian is talking to her friend Andrea, who happens to be Thomas's daughter. Fian confesses that she might be pregnant with Jeremy's baby. However, she fears that they might be caught, because premarital intercourse is considered to be a sin in their cults. Thankfully, Andrea doesn't judge her and is ready to support her in this matter. Later that day, Malcolm summons all the newly arrived cult members to the church. He announces about a breach of a village rule, prohibition against leaving one's room after the night bell. In order to find out the culprit, he orders everyone to kneel down and recite the cult's prayer. The true adherents take turns reciting it, which makes Thomas nervous. Shortly after, Malcolm approaches the man next to Thomas and instructs him to continue the prayer. The man remains silent for a moment before revealing himself 
himself as an undercover English spy. He swiftly draws his knife to attack Malcolm, but Thomas intervenes, saving the cult leader and injuring himself in the process. After this, the guards stab their spears through the spy's body, killing him on the spot. In the aftermath, Thomas is rushed to a medical facility, where Andrea helps him in tending to his wound. As she applies a bandage to his injury, Thomas asks her if she resents her father for making her part of this cult, but Andrea has no answer. At night, Malcolm parades Jennifer through the village, issuing threats to kill her if her co-conspirator doesn't come forward. Thomas watches this from his window, but he is unable to gather enough courage to confront the cult leader. Meanwhile, Malcolm imposes a limited time frame for the intruder to reveal themselves before leaving. The following morning, Jennifer is restrained in chains while children poke her for fun. Not long after, Andrea comes to her with some food and a blanket. She orders the kids to leave and promises Jennifer that she'll try her best not to let anyone harm her. Meanwhile, Fian goes to the bathroom to check if she's really pregnant. Unbeknownst to her, her father Quinn is keeping an eye on her through a door hole. He senses something amiss, but chooses to keep it to himself for the time being. Later on, Thomas notices that his sister is being taken somewhere else. He then tells Jeremy to be ready because he'll be executing his plan tonight. On that night, Malcolm hosts a village-wide feast, allowing everyone to eat. This festival turns out to be Malcolm's plan to distract everyone so that he can search their homes. Shortly after, Thomas exits his cottage only to stumble upon Andrea. She asks him for a dance, but he turns her down because he's a tormented badass and he has to carry out his rescue plan. Following this, Thomas meets Jeremy behind Malcolm's house. He breaks into the house and enters the secret basement, which leads to a dark tunnel. In the meantime, Malcolm, Quinn, and Frank search Thomas's quarters, where they find a floor plan of their house. This discovery confirms their suspicion that Thomas is the intruder, prompting the three of them to hurry to Malcolm's place. Frank arrives first and notices his son on watch duty. He hurriedly sends his son away, avoiding any potential suspicion surrounding the boy's involvement. Moments later, Quinn enters the tunnel, while Malcolm arms himself with a shotgun and moves towards the other exit. Inside the tunnel, Thomas senses that he's being trailed, so he dives into a sewer filled with blood and sludge in order to hide himself. A short while later, a creepy old woman emerges from the blood and charges towards Thomas, freaking him out. She gives this weird ecstatic baby shriek thing. It's fucked. In a state of panic, he crawls away and soon ends up inside a dark beach cave. When he turns back, the woman mysteriously disappears. Thomas then uses a lighter as a makeshift torch to look around, only to discover the cave's walls covered in markings, depicting a deity. Outside, Malcolm visits a barn, where the same old woman is imprisoned in tree roots. She turns out to be the island's deity, whom the cult members all worship. Malcolm reprimands her for showing herself to Thomas, and then proceeds to feed her with his blood. As the woman drinks the blood, the vegetation that binds her begins to bloom. The following morning, Andrea finds Thomas in the cave, and provides him with a set of clothes to change into. During this, she notices numerous bruises on his back, prompting her to question it. Thomas reveals that he was a Christian missionary who once went to China to introduce Christianity there. However, he was caught and persecuted by the locals. As a punishment, they burnt his back. This experience led to his loss of faith in God, as he received no help during his time of need. Following this conversation, Andrea leads him into the middle of a wheat field and shows him a place where he can hide. Back in the village, Fionn confides in Jeremy about her pregnancy, which makes him happy. He then tells her that he is leaving the village forever with his father and expresses his wish to take her along. Fionn is happy to start her new life and agrees to accompany him. After this, Jeremy goes to prepare while she packs her belongings. Moments later, Quinn walks in and demands an explanation. Fionn reveals about the baby in her belly and her decision to keep it. This infuriates her father and believing it to be a sin, he mutilates her in a forced abortion, which results in her death. A short while later, Jeremy returns, only to discover his lover's lifeless body drenched in blood, consumed by grief. He engages in a physical altercation with Quinn, seeking retribution. However, Quinn manages to make his way out of the house, screaming for help. He catches everyone's attention and manipulates the situation by framing the boy for Fian's death. Overwhelmed and desperate, Jeremy flees to the wheat fields and begs Andrea's help to prove his innocence. Unfortunately, 
Unfortunately, it's too late as the guards apprehend both Thomas and Jeremy and return them to the village. In the next scene, Quinn prepares for a public execution by placing the boy in a torturing device. As a cruel form of punishment, he inserts a metal drill, hollowing out the back of Jeremy's head. A few moments later, Malcolm and Frank arrive at the scene and confront Quinn for his actions. However, Quinn instead calls Malcolm a false prophet and addresses him as a weak person. He also demands that he prove himself by executing Thomas. But before this, Frank pulls out his gun and vows to end everything by killing the deity. Thomas uses this distraction to fight the guards and frees himself from captivity. He then pursues Frank to the barn, where the deity is held. As soon as Frank enters the barn, he's shot by the deity's masked caretaker, Grinder. Grinder! In his last breath, Frank asks Thomas to burn the barn down. As Grinder walks out, Thomas hides himself and enters the barn through a secret passage. Shortly after, Quinn and Malcolm arrive at the scene. To make matters worse, Quinn decides to shoot Grinder, but Malcolm stops him. In a fit of rage, Quinn shoots the cult leader, which causes him to fall into the tunnel. Inside the barn, Thomas witnesses Grinder extracting blood from a corpse and feeding it to the deity. When Grinder leaves the barn for a while, Thomas searches around and finds some sacks, one of which contains Jennifer. He hurriedly tears it open and takes his sister out. The siblings share an emotional hug, and Thomas promises to take her back home. But right then, Grinder! appears and smacks Thomas's head from behind before taking Jennifer away. Sometime later, Thomas regains his consciousness and finds himself restrained on a meat grinding table with hooks embedded in his hands and legs. He is slowly pulled towards the sharp spikes and eventually has his fingers chopped off. But before the machine can grind the rest of his body, Thomas somehow manages to break free and starts fighting Grinder. He eventually overpowers the caretaker and kills him using the same grinding machine. Grinder evolved into Grinded. Following this, Thomas stands in front of the deity, who pleads with him to set her free. However, he instead grabs a lantern and sets the entire barn on fire, which quickly spreads throughout the village. Meanwhile, Quinn, who has chained both Andrea and Jennifer, shares his plan to repeatedly impregnate them and use their offspring as blood sacrifices. Okay, Quinn, you're drunk. Time to go home. Just then, Thomas shows up and starts fighting him. Amidst this commotion, the two girls manage to retrieve Quinn's gun and use it to free themselves from chains. After this, the three of them team up to strangle Quinn to death. But sadly, Thomas sustains heavy stab wounds in the process. Despite this, he escorts the girls to the boats so that they can flee the island with the rest of the villagers. On the way, Thomas collapses to the ground and he seems to be dying due to his injuries. Realizing that he won't make it, he instructs them to get going bidding them goodbye. As Thomas bleeds onto the ground, the vegetation around him grows and infuses within his body. His eyes then turn to the same shape and color as the deities, signifying his rebirth as the new guardian of the island. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.